Hello, welcome to part 5 of the video guide for the Okami New Game Any% Percent Beginner's Route. When we last left off, we had just defeated Orochi and returned to Kamiki Village, and we had to leave during the uh, festival because the festival takes too long. If you haven't already seen the preceding parts, there's the playlist leading in the description. I recommend starting at the beginning to get an idea of what's going on. You can also see the text version of this guide, also linked in the description, as well as timestamps for various segments of the run. If you have any questions, you can ask in the description, or uh, in the comments, on Twitter, on my Twitter, or in the Okami Speedrunning Discord. Anyway, starting things off, we're going to be leaving Kamiki, as we did last segment, and we're going to go directly to the Mermaid Spring. Unfortunately, we just have to take this sort of roundabout path. we get up here, we are going to once again put gold dust on a weapon we got, which is Tsumugari, a weapon we received from defeating Orochi. This is a rather strong glaive. The main difference between glaives and reflectors, if you didn't already know, is that glaives can you can charge the attack up. So we're just going to uh, power up this glaive, and that's the weapon we'll be using basically for the rest of the run. From here we're going to want to go way back to Taka Pass once again. So that we can go to City Checkpoint. Which you can just tap down twice or, or up twice to make the pointer go there. From here we're just going to want to go around, jump over this little river, and run straight to the loading zone on the west side. By the way, if you didn't already bloom a sapling for extra praise, which I'm still not totally sure is necessary, there's another wilted cherry here, right on the way. And there'll be a few more opportunities to get extra praise later, so it's not a huge problem. From here, all we have to do is head right to the edge, and if you don't have 20k yen, at least 20k yen already, I'm going to recommend that you quickly go behind the merchant here and dig up this chest which has a bullhorn worth 3k. Uh, and then you can just sell it to him and buy anything you need, which you shouldn't need anything right now. Other than that, we're just going to wait until this guy here, Yoichi, fires his arrow and we're going to light it on fire. Now before we do that, uh, I am going to recommend that you make a save file here, uh, right at this save mirror. This will make it easier for you to check for uh, for you to practice the city checkpoint skip which is the main trick that makes the difference between the beginners route what we're doing now and the advanced route the gist of it is with gold dash we can swim all the way across the river to that point right there then we can climb up this rock and then use the rock to get up to this ledge without crossing over the bridge this lets us completely skip the moon cave, which is the dungeon we just spent a whole lot of time doing. And obviously, as a result, it saves a lot of time. About 20 minutes, in fact. Uh, 20 to 25 minutes, probably. But since that trick is very difficult, and I don't have a guide up for it yet, uh, we're just going to light the arrow, which you need Inferno to do. And we're going to just cross straight over the bridge. And go straight to Ryoshima. And this opens up the second major arc of the game. As you get up here, Ethan's gonna talk. And then once we get out into Ryoshima, uh, Ethan's gonna talk again after this camera pan. Similar to what happened in Taco Pass. Then we're going to be going up here. Uh, there's a fight trigger that's over there and we want to skip it. So instead we're going to go up this hill and around it. 
Unfortunately, this hill is covered in a curse zone, so we can't spend too much time here. So you have to do this with Gold Ash, and you have to be rather precise about it. We're actually going to go a bit left here, because we can't climb up the right side of the hill. And then we're just going to hug the wall here, and jump down when we start running out of uh, health for the curse zone. So after skipping that fight, we're just going to go straight into here, uh, as long as you don't get stuck. The camera here is a bit wonky. Normally you'd be intended to uh, fill up each of these ponds successfully, or successively and drag the water over here, but we don't need to do that. Uh, we can actually skip this first pond, and only this first pond, by jumping up to here. Oop, that was weird. If you angle the camera down and slightly to the right, you can catch the water here without having to go to the middle pond. Then from here, we're going to want to go out. We'll jump here, and then just drag the water up. From here, after after this cutscene, there's going to be a scrollable cutscene right about now. Then we're going to want to bloom this tree. Don't forget to do this, because otherwise uh, you won't uncurse Ryoshima. And from here we can just skip the restoration cutscene like always. Then skip using Stex, and just dash over to the left. The fight trigger that we skipped, which would be around here, we don't need to skip it again because that trigger is only in Cursed Ryoshima, and we're not in Cursed Ryoshima anymore. They're separate maps. So right now we're going to go over and we need to get to the dojo, which is sort of an island towards the west on the map. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get all the way over there, so instead we're going to abuse the fact that in this game, interiors are stored under the map of the corresponding exterior, so we can actually just fall into them. And strangely, the interior is not stored under the like corresponding building on the overworld. It's, they're just stored together in some area on the map, and it happens to be that the uh, dojo is stored pretty much directly under uh, Ankoku Temple up there, and we can clip out of bounds here to get there. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much line ourselves up and run into the banister of this low staircase. Uh, you can see here that there's a dot right here in the center of the screen. Uh, Basically, if we're to the left of that dot, or like, facing straight at it, and we run into this, we'll clip out of bounds, but we'll fall straight down into the void, which takes about 15 seconds of straight falling. So we want to clip slightly to the right of this dot here, uh, in order to land on some out of bounds collision. So basically just walk into it repeatedly until you clip through. This can take a few tries, and it's rather precise. Uh, but I got it right there, pretty quick. If you want to be able to retry it quickly, make a save over there, right now. Uh, it's This is the kind of trick you kind of want to practice just to get the feel of it, of exactly where you need to clip, the angle, the positioning, and everything. And also because it's actually possible to soft lock yourself here if you're not careful, in such a way that you actually have to reset the run, like there's nothing you can do to save it. Uh, but it's pretty easy to avoid, I'll explain in a second. So once we get out of bounds here, under the stairs, make sure you don't like go back out of the stairs, which you could do by holding down right now. We're going to face up towards Ankoku Temple, or face north I guess, and we're going to do a tackle jump, but make sure your jump is a low jump so that you don't jump up through the stairs, because you can clip back into bounds that way, which would force you to do this clip again. So tackle and then low jump, does that make sense? Okay, let's do it. And make sure you're... While you're in the air here, while you're falling, just look at the minimap and try to line up Ami's nose with the bottom of Ankoku Temple, uh, the icon on the map. You can see it right there. This is the kind of position you're looking for. After a little while, uh, the Ami's icon will sort of flip around. That indicates that you've gotten to the interior level of, of the map, which means it now considers you, like the map now considers you to be in an interior. But right now we're in the dojo, which is happens to be under Ankoku Temple. So we're gonna talk to Mr. Onigiri here. 
or Onigiri Sensei, I should say. And we're just going to mash confirm to buy the first thing on the list, which is Holy Eagle, which is the double jump ability. And of course, that costs 20k yen, and this is why it's so important to have 20k yen up to this point. Since the Moon Cave, we haven't done a single fight, so we absolutely need to have 20k yen after the Moon Cave, or after Orochi, in order to afford this ability without having to do any additional grinding. Just hold fast decks for this, and then leave. And then just hold fast decks again, because we can talk to you more. And then we're just going to leave the dojo. Isun's going to talk here about how cheap the dojo looks. That text is normally supposed to appear when you first like, come near the dojo, but we haven't come near the dojo, uh, well, the exterior of the dojo. So now we have double jump. Right now, we're now going to go do another trick, which is another fight skip. This one's to skip a fight with an enemy called an Ubume. And this skip is pretty precise. It's pretty easy to mess this one up. And you have to do this twice in the run. So if you mess it up either time, uh, then you have wasted time, basically. Uh, if you don't want to do this skip, if you find it too difficult, then you can just not go for the skip the first time, do the fight, and then you don't have to go for the skip either time, which is technically faster than going for the skip twice and failing it the second time, for example. Uh, basically what we're going to do is, the trigger is like this shape, or well like this shape sort of, but it doesn't extend very far. Basically as long as we're past, we're like before this line pretty much, we won't hit the trigger. And the trigger also just barely doesn't cover the edge past, like, here. So we want to jump from the edge of the bridge, or the pier here, turn around in the air, and hug this cliff face to land somewhere around, like, here. And then we can just go past the trigger. Alternatively, you can land, like, right here, and then do a wall jump to get to somewhere around here. Uh, but landing here is rather precise, so it's mostly a backup option if you get stuck on the cliff face. It, again, it's very easy to mess up this trick, but I would recommend going for it at least once. Like, save at the Ryoshima, Do Ryoshima mirror over there. Get this trick once, and then save in Seon. Basically, it's similar to the Agata intro cutscene skip, where it's way easier to get it once, and then save at a mirror that's past the skip and then go back to practice it, rather than practicing it from a mirror before the skip, which is rather far away. But it does mean you have to get it at least once successfully. So I'm going to try and demo it here, but I might fail. But I got it. Okay. So you saw it there, more or less what I did. Jumped from there, and then sort of did a turnaround in the air with my double jump to get over to here, and then got past. From here we're going to want to go left rather than going straight to Seon, because we want to unlock this Mermaid Spring and this is the best time to do it. We're going to use the, one of the XMs that we got from uh, the Imp Merchant. And we're just going to go through this fight pretty quick. Make sure you conserve dash at the end, and skip the cutscene. Then we can go straight to the Seon City. Make sure you don't jump here, because there's an invisible wall over the loading zone. Which you can get stuck on. From here, there's going to be a camera pan. Uh, Isun's gonna talk, so skip it. But we're going to ignore all of this. We're just going to go straight to the aristocratic quarter. If you've seen, say, the world record run, you might notice that we're not uh, going to do a clip here where we get Fireburst. That's because we don't need Fireburst in this run since we got Inferno. Which is actually better than Fireburst for basically everything. It's just that Fireburst is a lot quicker to get. Uh, there's no text here, I just skip out of habit, but you shouldn't. Uh, from here we're going to be doing what I consider to be one of, if not the hardest tricks in the beginner's route. Uh, this trick is actually kind of similar to C 
uh, city checkpoint skip in terms of the mechanics involved. Basically, we want to get up to this bridge, but in order to get up to or get across this bridge, in order to get farther into Sion or Stratic, normally we're supposed to talk to Benkei to raise the bridge, and to get Benkei to raise the bridge, we have to do a fishing mini game. But to do a fishing mini game, we have to make sure there's water here, and to get the water back in Sion, we have to do a digging mini game way back in the commoners' quarter. So obviously, all of that takes a bit of time, and we'd rather not do that if we don't have to, which fortunately we don't. So, what we're instead going to do is we're going to jump up here from this tree here. So we're going to jump from here onto this branch here. We're going to get on top of the tree, and on top of the tree is a bit of slippery collision that we can stand on. And when there's slippery collision you can stand on, you can do a ground tackle, but, make, but have the slippery collision slide you off of the surface so that your ground tackle ends in the air with a bunch of extra momentum from the slipping off the surface. Which we can then use to do a ground jump from somewhere like here, then it's like ground jump here, do a double jump, and then we can get all the way up to the top of the bridge. Overall this trick is rather precise, uh, and it, because there's so many variables involved in terms of positioning, I can't give you a strict guideline on how to do it. But I'm going to do my best to demonstrate it. Oh, looks like I made a mistake. So that's a good opportunity to demonstrate the backup strat here. So you don't actually have to go do that whole run up again with gold dash. Uh, you do need gold dash to make it the first time. But you can make it from here actually without having to go all the way up to the bridge. Just by doing a tackle jump. And you can just barely make it on. So there's a successful way to do sound bridge skip. There's a lot of ways you can succeed here. Uh, some people like using the inner camera so that it follows behind Ami so that you can see where the bridge is as you're jumping towards it. I personally find that that's too too much, uh, too many variables with the way the camera can follow behind you. So I prefer to use the outer camera, but do whatever you're most comfortable with. You're going to have to practice this trick a lot, so I recommend making a save in uh, say on commoner's quarters at the beginning there and then just repeatedly jumping back off the bridge to practice it again. Uh, we also have to do this trick twice in the run, just like Ubame skip, so it's extra important to be consistent for it. With luck, or with practice, you should be able to do it consistently within like three tries, I would say. It's not that hard, but it's not totally critical that you do it first try every time. From here, we're just going to dash in, and there's a cutscene right here, remark where Isun talks about the pollution cloud. So we can just skip that. And then there's going to be Waka here. Basically, there's a lot of things that stop you here. So we have to talk to Waka twice. If you don't talk to him twice, Isun will complain. Or I think Waka complains that you like didn't talk to him. Okay, from here we're going to do yet another trick that we have to do twice in the run. So with Gold Dash, you can get over this barrier, which skips having to talk to Rao. This trick is rather precise as well, uh, but it's probably a lot easier than Sound Bridge Skip. Basically, you have to have Gold Dash, and then you need to turn in the air so that you land on this platform with Gold Dash, then jump at the very edge, such that you aren't too far to the right from this perspective, so that you don't hit the invisible ceiling that's like here. So, And then you need to angle yourself so that you get over the uh, railing here, so that you can land roughly in this position and then jump straight down just by jumping over this invisible wall here. If you do it very well, you'll conserve dash through it, which is really nice, but it's not strictly necessary. And there's a lot of backup strats for that trick because there's a lot of ways you can fail it. Uh, I'll go over it more in detail during the second run through, which we will be getting through, getting to in this video. From here, oh, ah, I made a mistake. Okay, well, this is a interesting time to demonstrate. Uh, basically, you're not meant to get to the aristocratic quarter without raising the water level, which means that the canals in the aristocratic quarter don't have bottoms, unlike the canals in the commoner's quarters. This means you can fall straight through them. You can actually use this to do interior clips similar to what we did with uh, the dojo in Ryoshima, but obviously you don't want to do that here. It takes too much time falling down, about 15 seconds. So instead, you just want to jump straight over the canal, 
by running across uh, this railing here. I just fell down, so I messed it up. In any case, after that, we're going to go into the Imperial Palace, and we're going to get Rao's prayer slips. We haven't talked to Rao yet, but we can still take the prayer slips. It's just going to complement complicate things a bit more later. So on our way back, we're just going to take the same route in reverse. Uh, this time it's a bit easier since we have more time to line up or jump. And just go into Rao's room. Then tackle jump into her trigger here. She's going to talk, uh, but she's not going to get down because we haven't talked to her yet. So just talk to her a few times while mashing confirm, fast text, and skip until roughly the second or the second confirmation dialogue so that was one too many talks from here we want this xm so we're going to get it uh if you're if you did everything correctly here you should still have gold dash from the aristocratic quarter or from from the imperial palace uh Eason will talk to you there that's actually an auto stop so you don't need to jump into it but it's not a big deal if you do and then we're just going to leave because uh, basically the conversation with Rao was about getting to the sunken ship uh, so that we, she can get the fox rods and we can get the lucky mallet. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go do the sunken ship. So just take a clean line out of Seon. It probably should be day. Oh, well, there you go. In any case, it doesn't have to be any particular time of day here. Just jump down. Make sure you don't jump uh, through the Uvame trigger that we skipped already. That would be a big waste of time. And we need gold dash coming up to here, because we're not going to enter the sunken ship the normal way. The normal way would require us to run all the way over there to the moon turret and then watch a big cutscene where the water gets split and then swim through the water. Uh, we don't actually need to do that because we can clip into the sunken ship and reach the loading zone without lowering the water. So in order to do that, we're going to do a jump from roughly this position on the map, because this is the closest to the sunken ship you can get. And we need to do a jump and then a double jump across the water towards uh, this piece of the ship here. Basically, this piece here that's coming out of the water we need to get onto that, so we're going to take a straight line to that, which means we're going to be using the outer camera since it lets us take straighter lines. And we're going to jump from the very edge of the land here and then double jump just before we hit the water so in order to get the maximum distance before we start swimming. And then we're going to mash the jump button in the water to swim faster. All of that is necessary because you barely have enough breath to make it, and you're normally supposed to have lily pad for this, or the water tablet. So there I missed my first jump, so I can just dash restore after swimming. It's not really that precise, uh, this is not as tough as I'm making it out to be. But it's definitely possible before you understand what matters here, to drown a couple times on your way here. Which you definitely don't want to do. As you can see I quite barely made it. From here we're going to want to jump over here. Uh, you can get another air refill here, but keep in mind, if you drown while you're on the ship, no matter where you've stepped on the ship, you will respawn on the shore there. Don't ask me why, but you can't respawn on the ship, even if you touched it. From here, we're going to basically swim into this corner while mashing the jump button, and we're going to sort of wiggle ourselves at roughly this angle until we clip into the ship. Then we're going to clip more into the ship by swimming in this direction. And then we're going to, once we're fully clipped into the ship, we're going to go into the loading zone from behind. So we clipped in halfway, and then we're going to clip in fully by swimming the other way. And that's how you do sunken ship clip. It should 
it might take a couple tries to get that right. It's possible to clip through the ship, and it's possible to get stuck clipped halfway. If you get stuck clipped halfway, just you can clip back out by just swimming towards the outside of the ship, and it shouldn't take too long. And then you can just get an air refill. But if that happens, if you get stuck for too long, then you can drown, which means you'll have to do the whole trick over. Uh, if you clip all the way through, just get an air refill again, because you don't want to drown here. Anyway, once you've clipped into the ship, skip a couple cutscenes, and then just do the tutorial here. Uh, we can actually avoid having to get all of these guys. If you have only 17 demon fangs, or if you have at least 17 demon fangs, you can get three here as a maximum. Uh, but you can actually avoid having to get all three if you kill them while more than one is stuck to you at once. You only get one demon fang per uh, slip, basically, as far as I'm aware, anyway. And fortunately, at the end of the moon cave, we had about 19 demon fangs since we did some extra fights, since we failed some skips. So it's not a big deal. Uh, we should have 21 right now, yep. And that's all you need for the ne next segment of the done next segment of the run. Uh, from here, we're actually not going to do the sunken ship. We're going to skip the entire thing. So, uh, in this case, what we're going to do is this is the only instance of this particular trick. But this is a mechanic that actually works in a lot of places in the game. It's just only particularly useful here. This is a sort of a I like to call this a mega auto jump. Basically. When you can auto jump up a surface, like see I'm not pressing the jump button here, Ami will just automatically jump up here. If you interrupt an auto jump with a wall jump, the upwards momentum of the two gets added and you get a super high wall jump, which is the mega auto jump. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to force an auto jump by flicking to the left, then we're going to immediately turn Ami back towards the wall and then press jump as soon as possible in order to get a wall jump as soon as possible. The sooner you do the wall jump, the more momentum you have, and you need to do it almost immediately to get all the way over the wall. So we're gonna try that. So that was basically perfect timing. It does take some practice to do, but it's obviously super easy to practice, because you can just sit here, jump down, and retry it. Uh, if you don't get all the way up the wall, if you get a slightly worse timing, you can still make it by doing a wall tackle angled this way to wall balance onto this ledge here. But that's rather precise, so I prefer to get the full jump every time. From here, on top of this wall here, we're just going to power slash the cannon to rotate it down. Draw a cherry bomb here. Yep. And then jump down. And that should reveal the key. So we're just going to grab the key. It's pretty annoying to keep dash here, but it, you can do it. And we're just gonna talk it or bring it to the lockjaw. From here, we want to get right up to this door, and then we want to use the slip because as soon as we open this door, we're going to be assailed by the ghost of Crimson Helm, who will stop us in place. The fastest way to move while Crimson Helm is stuck to you is to do uh, air tackles. Uh, once we're about here we can just get the lucky mallet. Then we're going to do the same thing backwards and as soon as he leaves you you can just dash out. And that's the entirety of the sunken ship. We didn't do basically any of it. You have to watch this cutscene where the water that we didn't separate is gonna fall back in, surrounding the sunken ship. Then we're going to skip this cutscene, and we're just going to swim towards the water dragon here, because we can't really escape from uh, getting eaten here, so it's just faster to get eaten sooner. Then skip soon, And this is why we need to do all of these tricks twice, basically. Because we end up back out here, and we can't get back into Seon yet. Uh, without going through the normal direction. So we're going to do Ubume skip again here, and hopefully I don't mess it up. And we got it perfectly. So from there, uh, oh wait, I should mention, if you do fail Ubume skip, or if you decide not to go for it, uh, the Ubume is similar to the Crotengu, it's a winged enemy. Uh, the gist that you, 
The basic strategy you want to follow is hit it once with like a sub weapon attack to make it block because it'll use its umbrella to block. Then use Gale Storm to make it go into a like a wind blown animation where it can't block. And then just do uh, use your sub weapon plus DI plus the with the glaive instead of the snarling beast to combo it out and just kill it. And you should be able to do that in a single phase, if not only two or so. It doesn't take long to defeat it all, it's just faster to skip it, because one no fight is better than more fights. From here we're just going to run through, and once again we're going to have to do Rao skip and uh, Sound Bridge skip. So we're just going to do the same methods we did before. One thing I should mention is you actually cannot avoid doing Rao skip the second time. You might think, why don't we just run through Rao's building? Uh, unfortunately, I got stuck there, which means I couldn't make it. Uh. We made it. Only a couple tries. Anyway, you might think, why don't we just run through Ra's building, but I'll show you, uh, since this doesn't take very long to show. Even though Rao isn't supposed to stop us here, she's gonna stop us. Go, kore kore. In English, you'd say wait, uh, or something like that. Don't you want to talk to me or something? Basically, we never cleared the trigger for her stopping us because we never talked to her the first time, which means we can never leave through the back entrance, and it'll actually happen no matter like how late in the game you get, that trigger will always be there. So instead, we're going to just do Rouse Skip again. And maybe I can demonstrate some of the backup strats here. This is one way of failure if you hit the ceiling. This is another thing that can happen, you can get stuck here. Uh, sorry for not giving the warning, but epilepsy warning. The way you get out of this is not to jump. If you jump, you'll just clip down through the wall and you'll have to reset it. The way out of this is to just tap up repeatedly until you get out of it. And you see, it didn't take that many taps. It took two, I think, in this case. And then you'll be able to do the rest of the trick normally. Uh, you just jump to the right, basically. But I want to demonstrate the other backup here. If you end up down here, like if you fail the clip and you, you get over one of the invisible walls, but not onto this, this wall here. If you land here, you'll get stuck in this corner. It seems like you can't get out, right? The way you get out is you dub jump, double jump, and then air tackle onto here, and that gets you onto the wall. And then the same thing applies, you can just tap up to get out of that uh, spazzing state. And from here you can just get over. So that's how you do Rasket. From here, once again, don't fall into the canals like I did. And we're just going to go straight to the Imperial Palace. And do the rest of the dungeon. Fortunately we're done with all of the hard tricks in Seon. You can skip this cutscene, and you can skip this cutscene that's going to show up after the loading zone. And then I believe we can skip you some stacks here, yep. And then just draw a line to the chest. This gets you a Holy Bone S for free during the cutscene. Uh, that's actually going to be important later, we're going to be using that, so be careful not to use it uh, early, because it's going to be the first thing in your menu. But it's okay if you do, it's not a huge problem. Then we're going to jump into this trigger here for the blocking spider. And then we're going to jump onto this foot, which is also a trigger. So those triggers done, now we're going to do a precise jump here. This is called Kaguya Skip. If you don't make the jump, uh, basically what we did is with gold jump, or gold dash, gold dash is required here, we jumped from... Mm, you can't see it very well. We jumped from over there to over here. You, it's pretty precise, but it's not too bad. If you don't want to go for it, if like if you're finding it difficult, uh, save over there and practice it. But if you don't want to do that, you can just go into the trigger here, 
and then we'll have to take a slower route later. But I'll explain why we do this trick, because it's not just to jump a bit faster. Then we're going to jump into this fight with the Thunder Doom Mirror. Uh, this is what one of those XMs we picked up is for. So just use that now. And try and conserve Gold Dash through this. The mirror here is a bit nasty. Or the, the camera. Uh, it's difficult to conserve Dash through this. Once the foot passes through roughly this point, there's a Lockjaw key here. Just use e soon to grab it. And then we're going to leave immediately. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to abuse the fact that we never saw hit the first Kaguya trigger and jump into it, which saves a bit of time. And so we're going to hit both Kaguya triggers at once here. If you didn't do Kaguya skip the first time, if you just jumped onto this rock and went around, the first trigger won't be here, and the second trigger isn't big enough. So what will happen is... Uh, You'll just have to go around both ways. From here, we're just going to go hit the Lockjaw. And we're going to go get Veil of Mist. You'll just have to wait here, because for some reason, this cracked floor doesn't blow up the cherry bomb automatically. After this camera pan, we're going to skip you soon. And be careful here, because this acorn right here will... Uh, it'll make you bonk if you just go... So, be careful not to bonk. Then we're going to blow up this wall. And go get uh, Veil of Mist. We're going to power slash this gourd. The whole gourd's a hitbox, so just turn around, use R3 to get the camera behind you, and then power slash the gourd. Or, uh, a bit higher. Then, uh, we're going to go into the gourd. Immediately, turn left, R3, and then GS loop right. Or the reverse, you can turn right instead. This constellation's pretty easy. It's pretty forgiving. Skip it. Skip these soon. And then the way we do Veil of Mist in this run is we're just going to do two horizontal lines. It's a lot easier than doing two lines under each other. Uh, once you've done the tutorial, you're going to immediately Veil of Mist again. Again, because the first Veil of Mist doesn't actually affect the spider for some reason. From here, uh, be very careful if you're following along. Do not move forward. Go right. Just hold right. Yep. I missed the spider. Basically, as soon as you exit the, the room there, there's a fight trigger right in front of the door. It's a small fight trigger, but if you move forward at all, you'll immediately hit the fight trigger, and that fight trigger is pretty annoying to do, and you don't really have good resources to beat that enemy quickly. So just hold right as soon as you enter the loading zone, so that you'll avoid the fight trigger. It that This fight skip is honestly one of the easiest, but I always forget to do it, and it costs a lot of time. So do not forget, don't be like me. On your way up this spider, uh, you'll notice there that I jumped in the middle. That's because for some reason, this spider likes to cause you to clip down through it, which forces you to wait for another cycle. Uh, I don't exactly know why, but basically it like teleports upwards a short distance while it's moving up and that causes you to fall down through it. So if you jump during that time when it clips up, you won't get clipped through. From here, we're going to go back where we came. Uh, these spiders will now block you properly, so just fail of mist before you get to them. You can do the Kaguya skip jump again here if you want to, but it's not as important right now. Just only if you can make it consistently. From here, we're going to run straight towards that corner there. So as soon as we get to this broom, you want to Veil of Mist. You want to wait until you get to the broom, because if you do it correctly, then you won't have to Veil of Mist a second time for the second broom. But if you miss the timing, then just Veil of Mist twice. From here, we're going to use Isun to grab this chest, which has an Infinity Stone. And while he's on the way back, we're going to Power Slash these Bamboo. 
uh, to make a bridge across. Yeah. That's my fault. I should have air tackled. So let's just do that again. Then we're going to get onto this spider. If you do it with good timing, you can avoid having to wait for the ride up. Then this room is rather annoying. Uh, the spiders are in a big cycle, and it's very easy to lose a lot of time here to, due to missing the cycle. So try not to fall down, because if you fall down, you'll hit the blue scrolls, and the blue scrolls waste a bunch of time. And obviously you'll have to do the whole spider thing again. But if you're lucky, you can skip a couple spiders like I did there. From here, we're just going to run on through. And then on this spider, we can actually do a bit of a skip here. By jumping all the way across to this rafter here. You have to wait until the blue spider moves to the edge of its position. So you might want to wait until it moves back and forth once or twice to give yourself extra time. From here, there's another trigger, like right here, but we can skip it by jumping, uh, like, over here. Like so. And then we're inside the Emperor. Just run around here. Uh, for this next thing, we're going to be fighting Blight. You might want to save right here, because the Blight fight is not hard. It's not nearly as hard as Orochi but it's rather precise in the sequence of things you have to do. Uh, so, let's just get things started, shall we? Just like every boss fight, we have to confirm that we're ready to go. You can just go through this gold gate, so if you die, you're not in trouble. And we're just going to jump over this low wall here. Uh, don't double jump since you'll waste more time in the air. The trigger happens as soon as you land. Skip the start of the fight, and then we're going to wait until he does his uh, quick draw attack, which is this. Delve miss, pause, use a steel fist sake, and then start charging your glaive attack. And then as soon as he lands, Just do a combo there with uh, sub weapon, DI, and power slash, and you should be able to take them out in one cycle. If you miss the single, the one cycle, which is possible to do if you mess up the sequence, uh, just deal with his other attacks. The main other attack you didn't see there, besides the quick draw, is he can raise like a circle of swords. Uh, you just have to power slash them to make him vulnerable again if he does that. Also, just don't forget, you can move around while you're charging up a Glaive attack. That's the important thing for that fight. I'm going to skip this result screen. We don't want to save. Uh, you can skip this text as well, and he's going to open up his uh, shop. From here, if you did collect Demon Fangs and you want to make the rest of the run a bit easier, uh, buy this item here, the Peace Bell. Instead of equipping it right away, we're going to have a better time to equip it later, so we're just going to leave the Imperial Palace right now. Then after leaving the Imperial Palace, just dash in Sakagia. And talk to her twice, so that she disappears. From there, uh, I think I'm going to call things off for now. Uh, I covered everything from the end of Moon Cave through the end of Imperial Palace, so I think that's quite enough. If you have any questions, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can ask in the comments on my Twitter or in the upcoming Discord, all linked in the description. Don't be afraid to consult the text version of this guide or to watch the rest of this uh, series, which is going to have a playlist also linked in the description. Ciao.